Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on comparing a MANOVA to univariate ANOVAs. As always, if you find this video useful, please like it and subscribe to my channel. I certainly appreciate it. I have here in the SPSS data editor fictitious data, and I'll be using these data to illustrate the difference between conducting a MANOVA and conducting multiple univariate ANOVAs. So let's take a look at these variables. We have program. This is an independent variable. It has two levels, psychodynamic and treatment as usual. And then we have two dependent variables. And they're both measured at the continuous level. We have depression and substance use. And let's assume that these are psychometric instruments, these are scores from psychometric instruments, and that a higher score, for example on depression, indicates more severity of depressive symptoms and a higher score on substance use indicates more severe symptoms of substance use. So in looking at these two groups, the psychodynamic counseling group and the treatment as usual, we want to see if there's any difference between these groups as measured on the depression variable and on the substance use variable. So we could conduct two ANOVAs. We go to Analyze, General Linear Model, Univariate. You can see there's room for one dependent variable here in a univariate ANOVA. So I'll move depression over and then program or the fixed factor and there are of course assumptions for ANOVA and other tests I may want to include but I'm just going to use basic ANOVA for this. I'm really just interested in this value here 0 0.058. This is not statistically significant. I was looking here at program 0 0.058. So there's no statistically significant difference between psychodynamic counseling and the treatment as usual. Moving to substance use, I can go back to the general linear model, univariate, and I can just move depression out and substance use in, click OK. And again, I have the tests of between subjects effects table program and I have a non-statistically significant result again, 0 0.052. So both 0 0.058 and 0 0.052 are greater than the alpha that I'm using, which is 0 0.05, or 5%. So based on just the results of those ANOVAs, we would say there's no difference between the two groups on either variable. But this isn't taking into consideration what we could find if we conducted a MANOVA. A MANOVA is similar to an ANOVA, but it takes into account more than one dependent variable. And it can detect differences on the combination of dependent variables that individual and univariate ANOVAs could miss. So it's using, the MANOVA is using a combination of the dependent variables and it has an ability to detect differences because it's using that combination that you will not be able to pick up with univariate ANOVAs. MANOVA takes into account the intercorrelations among the dependent variables. So to conduct a MANOVA, I'm going to go to Analyze, General Linear Model, and Multivariate. Now, with MANOVA, as with ANOVA, there are several assumptions. I'm not testing those as part of what I'm doing here. I'm just going to move the two dependent variables, depression and substance use, into this dependent variables list box. So you can see here, this dialog can handle more than one dependent variable. And program over to the fixed factor list box. Then click OK to conduct the MANOVA. So we see here under multivariate tests, and again there are several assumptions we'd be looking at for MANOVA, and that might determine which statistic we interpret in this table. 
But for this example, I'm going to use Wilkes Lambda under Program. And we can see for the p-value that it's 0 0.044. There's a statistically significant p-value. So the for the combination of dependent variables, when you consider the combination of those variables, MANOVA has found a statistically significant result. Look down here under tests of between subjects effects, we can see we have the same values that we determined using the ANOVAs for depression, a p-value of 0 0.058, and for substance use, 0 0.052. So in this case, MANOVA detected a difference, and the univariate ANOVAs missed that difference. So this is an example of how MANOVA can be more powerful by taking into account the intercorrelations among the dependent variables. It's important to recognize here that this doesn't mean that it's always appropriate to use MANOVA instead of univariate ANOVAs. So moving back to the data editor here, if you have a situation where the dependent variables are not correlated, then univariate ANOVAs would be more appropriate. Or if your dependent variables were highly correlated, again you'd want univariate ANOVAs in that case and not MANOVA. So with that in mind, situations to look out for would be where you have a dependent variable that's calculated from one or more of the other dependent variables. Uh, you're taking a risk there that they are highly correlated. If you have a pretest and post-test, that could also be problematic. Having dependent variables that are highly correlated is referred to as multicollinearity. So whenever you have multicollinearity with the dependent variables, you want to consider the univariate ANOVAs instead of MANOVA. So although MANOVA has several advantages over multiple univariate ANOVAs, there are situations where you'd want to consider the univariate ANOVAs instead. With moderately correlated dependent variables, MANOVA does have more power. That is the ability to detect a difference that's actually there. It controls for type 1 error inflation, and it takes into consideration intercorrelation among the dependent variables. I hope you found this video comparing MANOVA to univariate ANOVAs to be useful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me. I'll be happy to assist you.